Positively fizz with passion. Coventry City for once enjoying the rub of the green. Nothing lucky about their opener. A precision chip from Noel Whelan had Keller flapping at fresh air. Not that everything went their way. George Botang sent off for this second bookable offence inside 60 seconds. Referee Alan Wilkie in no mood to be lenient. After that, the charge of the Royal Blue Brigade. Emil Heskey upended in the box by Paul Williams. But Matt Elliott's nerve deserted him and Coventry City hung on to the lead. With time fast running out, the Sky Blues counter-attack with devastating consequences. First, Paul Telfer crashing in their second. Seconds later, deja vu. Leicester's defence in tatters. Steve Frogger keeping his composure to put his side into round five. Even Mr Angry became Mr Bouncy. A bad-tempered game with referee Mike Riley issuing seven yellow cards and one red, and more surprisingly, Everton scored through Nick Barmby. The referee who'd not booked David Ginola last weekend ironically booked Danny Cadamatari for diving and then sent off Everton's Marco Matarazzi. Mr Riley needed a police escort off the field at the end. Can Newcastle enjoy a dreadlock holiday at Wembley come May? Certainly things are going their way. Bradford's enterprising approach saw Jamie Lawrence seemingly upended by Shea Given. No penalty. Rough justice for City and then a further sting in the tail. Kets Bayer put through by Shearer, but German Dietmar Hamann on hand for his first goal since joining the club. Alan Shearer hasn't scored in ten premiership starts. There were rumours of a training ground bust-up with Hullet this week, but he let his feet do the talking to put Newcastle further ahead. The last laugh belonged to Newcastle United and their enigmatic Georgian Temori Katsbaya. He latched on to Herman's through ball, kept his cool and sparked off more Geordie dreams about an away day in London in May. We have a goal of the month contender coming up. First, though, let's celebrate with Wednesday's Brazilian centre-back Emerson Thom, who's now scored his first goal in English football. Not bad for a player who cost absolutely nothing. In the 57th minute, though, Benito Carboni unleashed a stunning shot to make it 2-0. It needs little comment. It was his sixth goal of the season. To make matters worse for ex-Hillsborough favourite Gary Megson, his Stockport side had Paul Cook sent off for a couple of kicks at Danny Sonner. Cook felt Sonner had elbowed him. The referee blamed Cook. Second Division Bristol Rovers against Third Division Leighton Orient and all the goals came in the second half. The crowd of over 9,000, Rovers' biggest since they moved to the Memorial Stadium, saw the home side take the lead through Jason Roberts. That inspired Rovers and they scored a second soon afterwards through former Chelsea star David Lee. It was a harsh scoreline on Leighton Orient, who defended well and created some good chances themselves. It was made to look even more unfair when Roberts scored his second five minutes from the end to move Rovers into the fifth round for the first time in 20 years. It's been a good FA Cup so far for Wales and Wrexham fans were hoping to see Ian Rush score a debut goal. His dummy created a chance for Carl Connolly after only six minutes. Nice one, Boyo. But the first division side temporarily doused any Welsh dragon fire when Marcus Stewart's cross was firmly met by Wayne Allison to take the game to a replay. Bournemouth's manager Mel Machin was returning to the ground where he used to manage, but he saw his new side fall behind when Barnsley's recalled Darren Sheridan slammed in a goal after the ball had been cleared off the line by John Bailey. But five minutes after the break, it was 1-1. Jamie Vincent's corner was dummied by Eddie Howe, Neil Young shot, and it deflected back to Howe. Barnsley's player manager John Hendry took himself off and on came winger Martin Bullock and soon afterwards Barnsley retook the lead. Disastrous goalkeeping by Bournemouth's Mark Ovendale let Craig Hignett score. Bullock got the final goal of the match to take Barnsley into the fifth round. 
One other point worth noting, it was referee Paul Alcock's first match since the De Canio push. Anyone who left Meadow Lane early for a soggy bag of chips missed a caviar-style finish by Sheffield United. At first, though, it was all county, and after a spot of frantic target practice, Gary Jones deservedly put them ahead in this third-round replay. But on a pitch with more sand than Skegness Beach, Vas Borkis kept the blades in the hunt with his cleverly taken free kick. County then snatched the initiative and when Sean Murray unleashed this left footer from 25 yards, it was beginning to look ominous for United. And it looked pretty much game over when substitute Tony Garcia scampered across the sand. Gary Jones grabbed his second, 3-1. Surely there was no way back for Sheffield United now. Not so. With five minutes left, United clawed their way back into this cup tie, the ball falling to captain David Holdsworth, who drilled it home through a pack of players. Then, with 60 seconds remaining and Nottingham hearts in their mouths, United's Brazilian Marcelo scrambled home an equaliser to send the tie into extra time. And with county fans beginning to wish they'd opted for an early fish and chip supper, the first division side snatched the unlikeliest of victories. Marcelo again the scorer, United meeting Cardiff in...